You're listening to The Trial Lawyer's Handbook, a courtroom preparation podcast series brought to you by Holland and Knight. This series is hosted by litigation attorney Dan Small and is based on a long-standing article series he co-authored with United States District Court Judge Dennis Saylor for Massachusetts Lawyers Weekly. Listeners of this series will gain a fresh perspective on how attorneys can address various trial preparation issues and set themselves up for success in and out of the courtroom. Technology has transformed the nature, organization, and presentation of evidence at trials. Its impact and its benefits are undeniable, and there's no shortage of publications and presentations touting its wonders. With the inevitable attraction of newer and better things, you may overlook the potential pitfalls they present. So beware. Problems lurk among those shiny new toys. Make no mistake, I believe in the use of technology in litigation. Technology has made huge improvements in the way information can be stored and presented in the courtroom. Exhibits can be magnified and displayed with great ease, and demonstrative aids can be created by anyone with basic computer skills. But there are some ways in which technology can be a hindrance rather than a help, especially if you are one of those people who use digital devices for everything. You should bear in mind the many disadvantages of using a laptop or tablet rather than good old-fashioned paper and a three-ring binder as your principal resource at trial. What are some of them? Number one, malfunction. Even with vastly improving technology, things will go wrong. Your laptop will freeze at the wrong moment. You will touch the wrong key, then endure the agony of trying to fix it with a whole courtroom waiting and watching. And it may not get fixed. What's the answer? Practice and patience. Number two, lack of readability. Some laptop screens are difficult to read from any kind of oblique angle. Computer displays also are usually smaller and more cluttered than notebook pages and therefore harder to see. The answer? Consider readability as you review materials on your screen. Err, if at all, on the side of larger fonts, simpler pages, and those kinds of tools. Number three, inconvenience. It's normally quicker and easier to flip paper pages than to manipulate a mouse or a ball or even a touchscreen display. It's also easier and less intrusive in a trial to scribble a note on the margin of a written page than to type an entry into a digital device. The answer? Do a dry run. Get comfortable with what you need to do and what you need to make this work. Number four, barrier. The screen of an open laptop on a podium forms an additional physical barrier between you and the jury. It's one thing to have a colleague or assistant at counsel table working the computer. It's quite another to have that screen literally separating you from your witness and the jury. The answer, get help, and for God's sakes, look up. Number five, distraction. There is a magnetic attraction between your eye and the printed word, and somehow the computer screen has greatly increased the power of that attraction. Look around you at any restaurant or other public place. People are spending time and money to be together with other people. And yet, inevitably, many of them are looking at their devices. If your eyes are on the screen, you increase the risk that you will lose the jury. The answer? Try your case to the jury, not to your laptop. Number six, haste. Technology allows us to do amazing things at amazing speeds. Documents flash in front of us. Highlights get drawn out. Demonstrations flow and move, and much more. It may be flashy but it also may be fatal to your case. Stop. Slow down. Linger over important exhibits or connections. The goal is to help the jury learn and understand, not to put on a light show. You should control the technology, not the other way around. The answer? Slow this train down. Number seven, generational differences. Some jurors, older ones in particular, may view the overuse of digital devices as an affectation. Why does he always have to use that thing, they may think. Can't he just talk to us? Technology continues to improve at a rapid pace, and attitudes change as well, although not quite so quickly. Think long and hard about whether you really want or need that laptop at the podium and how far you want to go with technology. Understand both the promise and the pitfalls of technology in trial. Thank you for listening to The Trial Lawyer's Handbook. 
a courtroom preparation podcast series brought to you by Holland and Knight. For more information on courtroom preparation, please email dan.small at hklaw.com or visit hklaw.com forward slash Daniel dash small.